Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Full Pelt Music Podcast. Shortly we'll be joined by The Excerpts who released their new album, Learning How to Live and Let Go, on August 18th. But before then, the usual reminders from myself. If you would, please do follow Full Pelt on social media. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening. Welcome, Murray, from the excerpts to the Full Pump Music Podcast. We're absolutely delighted to have you on to talk about all the great stuff going on in the band. Um, but first of all, how are you this evening? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling, uh, yeah, feeling uh, very tired. I'm definitely <laughs> feeling tired today. I think, like, we've just got a lot going on, a lot going on at the moment. And uh, even when I'm not like physically doing something, I'm just like permanently thinking about what has to be done. So, uh, but besides that, I really can't complain. Good. I mean, there is a, a lot going on for the excerpts at the minute. And I imagine uh, as we talk, we're 10 days away from the release of, of your new album. And I imagine obviously everything's going to be ramping up over the next couple of weeks towards that release date. And we can't wait to talk to you about the album. But before we do, um, the most recent guests on this podcast happened all to have played 2000 Trees, which we were at and really, really enjoyed. So we've asked them all how um, how that experience was for them. And, and we'll chuck in for you, you as well, Mary. Obviously, uh, Bella Jump, which you just played, which looked absolutely incredible. I've watched the video of your, your oh, performance. So how has your summer been with those performances? Yeah, it was, they've, they've been great. It's been slightly surreal um, kind of being like like live shows for us like being kind of introducing ourselves like reintroducing ourselves onto the stage in like like festival settings because usually we'll like you know we'll do like a small club show or something as a as a kind of return but yeah we kind of walked out onto like bigger stage this time around so initially I think trees before we uh, before we, we walked out of trees. I think we were feeling slightly overwhelmed. Uh, in all honesty, I think yeah, we like I think there was a lot of anxiety with like a lot of things. We just we haven't we haven't played since like S- September September last year. But that was like a really really like intimate run in support of the music venue trust. So yeah, we were like panicking we were like yeah we were catastrophizing everything we were like what if nobody shows up what if we suck you know what if we've forgotten how to do this and then yeah as soon as we like hit the stage it it, i I think we sense like yeah it's just like uh an overwhelming amount of love and before we even kicked him with the first note i think we felt so comfortable uh so it was just like yeah, it felt very victorious to us. And then yeah, Belladrum. Belladrum was great. It was it was nice uh getting to go back to the homeland and play a festival there. And again, that had that had its own anxieties because it was being filmed for BBC iPlayer. Yeah. So <laughs> every time you you know, you feel like you're in the moment, you see like two camera guys just run past you and then you're like, Oh my god, oh my god, that's on TV. Um but it was great yeah we we had a blast up there so i think it was it's probably going to be the the only time we're the heaviest band on the bill so <laughs> that, quite, quite possibly yeah <laughs> yeah but no it was good it was like yeah it was actually kind of throwing ourselves in at the deep end with like coming back and playing bigger shows i think it was like a real confidence booster for us and yeah i think uh i think we played great at both shows and yeah, super happy, super happy. Yeah, no, good. And it's sink or swim, and you obviously um, swam completely. And um, the uh, iPlayer performance is still on there as we we speak. That listeners can obviously go on and check. Hopefully, it will still be on there by the time the podcast comes out in in about a weeks time after we talk. Um, I would definitely encourage listeners to go and check it out because it's uh, yeah, I've caught the band live quite a few times over the years yeah. and um it does capture you know the magic of, of the excerpt so definitely worth checking that one out and uh obviously there's a lot to check out with the excerpts right now and we're going to work our way through it and we're going to start off with the album so um obviously learning how to live and let go is out on august um the 18th 
it's your fifth uh, album um, that's coming out. And it's a, a bit of a uh, evolution, really, this album. And I guess maybe that's partly where some of the pressure may have come from. If you were playing new songs, of course, the the shows that you've just played, um, it is a bit different to what we are used mm-hmm. to with the excerpts, but in a really good, positive way. I've had a sneak peek uh, of the album, uh, and obviously I can encourage listeners um, definitely to pick up a copy. Um, was it a conscious decision um, on part of yourselves to to evolve your sounds? How did the recording process go for you this time? Yeah, I think it was... Um, um, I guess 50-50 this time round. I guess... Uh, we definitely it was the first time we've ever had a conversation where the three of us agreed that we needed to shake things up. Um, I've said I, th- I think I said this in an interview recently, but I should kind of say it again to double down. To us, it, it doesn't feel like a reinvention; it's more of a rejuvenation. Um, that's how I kind of see it. I actually think like you can trace back like it's still very much got the certs dna and i think you trace back like every single one of our previous records up until this point it's maybe just kind of presented in a slightly different way that's that's how i feel about it I, i honestly i don't think it's like as big a shift as some people might kind of have been led to believe with the single choices uh, I actually think the jump between like Cold Wind and Scatterbrain was bigger. Yeah. Uh, per, or even like Scatterbrain to There's Only You. It's it, it doesn't feel that like momentous of like of a jump to us. But, but maybe that's because we've lived with it for so long. I, I, I do think we're maybe like a little bit numb to that aspect of it. But yeah, we had it. We did have a conversation about kind of freeing ourselves of any ideas we once had about our band, basically. And uh, it was, yeah, incredibly freeing to make. And, you know, we had demoed kind of like 25 songs up until the point of the first lockdown. And they were they were pretty formed versions, um, but then when we went in with Steve Ansel to actually make the thing, we we spent a year in the studio, yeah. and he kind of worked as like a mechanic, and we actually initially thought we might release the demos as the album because they were kind of posh demos, but as soon as we got with Steve, he just like ripped everything apart and was kind of holding up all the junk showing us like you know like the oil spills and stuff like that and the the broken wires and stuff he was like you don't need that you don't need that you don't need that so we we started from scratch and yeah he kind of really um we're fortunate enough that the person we uh kind of co-wrote a lot of the songs with was was brave and bold and we're fortunate enough to have worked with Steve, who was also, he's hes out of his mind. Yeah. So in the best way possible. So he was so kind of encouraging about us uh, kind of taking risks and experimenting. And um, it was important that everything felt purposeful and everyone in the room was heard. and. Yeah, it's like we threw everything at the wall and it just so happens that like everything stuck. Um, but yeah, it was it was freeing and it was a really joyous record to make, even though the lyrical content is like would lead you to believe that it wasn't a very fun record to make. But it was a fun record to make. It was the life that inspired it that wasn't mm. that fun. Um so yeah, we're yeah, we're immensely proud of it. And yeah, we do feel like this is the the most kind of honest representation of our band that we've ever, ever released. Yeah. And it's great to hear that you enjoyed the process. And I love the word freedom because, um, yeah, quite often there's a lot of pressure on a band when they're making an album, uh, especially 
more so these days uh, a lot of artists i've spoken to recently have spoken of the pressures of making sure the music fits for example for for streaming and obviously like works of all the algorithms that go on and uh, really for me music should be about the artists making the music they want to make and, and not so much about you know making it for other people that need to make it for themselves so to hear you speak of freedom is a beautiful thing yeah completely and i guess that we were kind of slightly at the time we didn't think we were blessed but uh we we like kind of not even halfway through like for the majority of the making of the record we had split with our management company it was completely mutual all on good terms uh but we had no manager or management and also the label that we were with retracted their offer on us so that was all going on whilst we were making the record so we didn't have anyone to answer to it's like you know it was it honestly at times felt like like the the parents had left the building and had <laughs> left like some pizza money and uh you know Steve kind of grabbed the reins otherwise it would have gotten like seriously out of control but yeah the, like that very simple thing of not having to report back to anybody was so good for us and it really like strengthened the band's bond because I think at various times we were all kind of like fighting to try and find some hope because we we really didn't know if the record mm. was going to at least we we had no idea, and we kind of bound together and we're like you know we're going to do this because we're fucking one good enough and two dumb enough so you know it really did strengthen the group and and Steve was there by our side for the whole thing and you know even Steve like didn't take any money until we signed a deal he mm. was believed in it for from the get-go and was like you know when we told him the deal had been pulled he was like doesn't matter we're gonna finish this thing because i believe in it as much as you guys so um that that kind of the i guess the there was a lot of freedom kind of just bestowed upon us because of circumstance so yeah, yeah which is unreal otherwise we may have felt a lot more pressured um I mean, we put a, an, an immeasurable amount of pressure on ourselves anyway. Because yeah. we always think like we've got one shot at making another record. We've always felt like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's where that came from. And it was great. Yeah, it is great. And it's great to hear. And I, I love as well, obviously, um, Steve, yeah, is, is, we've had him on the podcast. He is a bit of a, uh, a crazy genius, really. And uh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, obviously um I'm, I'm it's a beautiful story and obviously he is um a great man and, and and I'm so chuffed that he did believe in it because the outcome again having had a sneak peek is fantastic and I did pick up on when you said you know maybe the single choices gave a bit of a false impression and I would agree with that because uh, again I often use the word DNA like a band does have their own DNA and even if they change their sound you can quite often still pick up on that DNA throughout it and I definitely can on this album especially as it progresses more and more it really does feel like uh an excerpts record and possibly i would go out on the limb um and, and say the best excerpts record yet but that's I not discounting agree. the other records because they're all fantastic as well so obviously <laughs> listeners do need to make sure um if you're not familiar with old older material that you do check that one out um and just on the album as well um i really love the artwork and it's something I quite often try and pick up on in the uh, podcast episodes and put a spotlight on so um I, I did read a little bit around obviously the it was a bit of a strenuous uh, exercise finding that artwork um but obviously did you just want to give us a little bit around that yeah um so I guess it began with uh maybe some people that listen to our band won't even know this but basically we uh for every previous record, it's featured a member of the band. And then Hold On To Your Heart featured all three of us. So Tom's on the first record as a child. 
Jordan's back on the second one. It's me falling to the sky on the third. Fourth is, yeah, all three of us. And then, so basically we had a conversation of like, shit, what should we do? Uh, one of my best friends, funnily enough, sorry, I'm going off course here, but my friend was like, it'd be so cool if you just split up. <laughs> Great advice. Brilliant. Brilliant. So yeah, cheers, dude. But, um, yeah, so again, with that, we knew we wanted to do something completely different and um, yeah, like kind of basically rebrand. So we knew we didn't want any of us on the record and I discovered an artist called uh, Connor Dewhurst, who's an Australian artist. And I just discovered him one night on Instagram. I was just kind of down a bit of a, a rabbit hole looking at artists on Instagram, as you do. And I was just like completely floored by his work. And uh, we got in touch with him and he was like, like just agreed to do it there and then basically. It was, it was a super quick process. But then, yeah, as it went on with the information that we had given him as to what the record was about and what we wanted kind of became um, apparent quite quickly that something was getting lost in translation and that like we had such a, a focused idea of what we wanted that it kind of put Connor in a box and everything he was sending to us was really good but just not what we had in mind so kind of took stock and I was like, right, I'll speak to you. I'll speak to you in a week because I I'm, I think we've kind of st stitched you up on this by giving you too many directions and you're a little bit lost, whereas we should have just given him full creative freedom. So I went back onto his page and was going to like reference um, kind of the images that stuck out to us initially and I came across what is now our artwork and I messaged him. It was just one of those light bulb moments. I saw it and was like, that's our, that's the record cover. That's it. That is it. So I emailed him very sheepishly because I get it. It's, it's old work for an artist. It, it's, and we've employed him to do something new, which he was excited about and, I didn't want to offend him, um, but I just had a feeling and I asked if it had ever been used and he was like, no. And he said that he loved that piece and was kind of gutted that it had never been used. So I said, please, can we use this? And yeah, he had some amendments to make with it. Some things got changed. Um, like, yeah, we made him add calm and chaos on either side of the on either side of the record sleeve and yeah a few etchings and and paint drops and stuff like that he kind of added um so yeah i'm i'm so pleased because it's almost meant to feel journal like it's almost like kind of what the feeling of uh almost like a journal or like a uh fanzine that kind of feeling yeah. of old punk zines because I, I love that aesthetic. Um, but yeah, I also kind of wanted it to be a little bit twisted, so it almost felt like you shouldn't be looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited for people to actually get it, because there's um, there's a lot of like nuanced features that you can only see when you actually have it, um, rather than just like a yeah. thing on the internet. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for people to actually hold it. It's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, very very pleased we got that over the line yeah no it looks beautiful um and uh obviously uh, often fits the uh aesthetic of the album as a whole really really well and listeners uh we will have links obviously in the bio of this and i do encourage you to uh click through and, and order the album and get a physical copy because um that's always what we should do um for sure um yeah. so going back to the singles then from the album obviously Gimme was the first thing or, or the first song from the album that uh, emerged prior to the announcement of the album. Yeah. Um, what about that song stood out to you to make you think, yeah, this is the song? Because the first song put out from any album is always an important statement. So, mm -hmm. yeah, why why was it Gimme this time around? Yeah, I, th I, I think he kind of 
nailed it there. It's it was just a statement piece, and um, being honest, like we wanted to release release a song that would be divisive, like I, we wanted to cause a bit of divide. It's like we're a very self aware band, and um. Even that song is very self-aware. Like, Fooly does kind of break the fourth wall and wink at the camera, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, it was like we wanted to just release, like, a fucking atom bomb, like a pop atom bomb, and just get people excited. I'd per- It's just, like, a really exciting song. And... Um, there was conversations about something else, like uh, another song coming first, but um, very quickly it was shut down. Like basically everybody wanted Gimme to come first. Everybody, just because if you, we kind of knew that if we were, well, one, like it could have been no song on the record represents the album. Like, if if blame had come out first, it 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 it, it was kind of like it didn't really matter. But Gimme just like fully kicks down the door, and again, it's like because we knew everything was a bit different, and we wanted to completely rebrand. Rebrand. It was like, well, let's just fully double down on this and kick the door off the hinges, and. Uh, if people like people are either going to love this or they're going to hate it, but it will be spoken about. And then lo and behold, it was like the biggest conversation piece we've ever had as a band. So, and, and it's, it's radically different from the last thing we put out, you know, yeah. with hold on to your heart and the wild heart dreaming EP. It was like, yeah, we wanted that like, we wanted that reintroduction just to be kind of a, um, a, a bit like bewildering. I think that's what we wanted. And when we were making the record, Steve would always say to us, he was like, I want people to hate this. That's it. That was his mantra. <laughs> he said it like once a week. Um, and I knew what he meant. Like, and now I know what he means because he was like, you've been in a, a very comfortable lane for a long time where journalists are really kind to you um bands take you on tour and and really like you guys and the people that love you love you and there's no like he was like there's no fucking negative energy going your way and he was like your world's too small he was like as soon as people hate you your world just goes like that and when gimme came out we, we like fully experienced that for the first time yeah like ever really and loved it <laughs> yeah amazing i'll stick by it crazy genius Stephen. Definitely. <laughs> that's, yes. that's fantastic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah absolutely love obviously yeah that everyone was in in agreement of, of obviously the the song coming out first and uh, i love a dad joke so i guess you could say it was a gimme hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um Another thing that I love is music videos. So we try to put the spotlight where we can on obviously artwork, but music videos is a big passion of mine because I grew up watching music TV. And um, obviously it is quite hard being in a band these days. You know, budgets have shrunk and quite often music videos are the first thing that get cut. So I do love when there is a music video I can watch for the artist that I'm talking to. And Give Me has a, a great music video that gives me big, like 90s sort of song two vibes um, yes. in that video. Um, so how did that video come about for you? How did you conceptualise it and put it into, in, into practice? Yeah, well, f- I mean, funnily enough, song two was yeah. referenced massively. <laughs> uh, I think it was song two, train spotting, everything everywhere all at once, and Breaking Bad was referenced. <laughs> um all like grungy colors basically so we got um our a and r guy put us in touch with zach pinchin who directed the music video and he um he's subsequently done all the main single music videos but basically we got put in touch with him i saw his work and i was i initially was like he's he's not right 
and uh our drummer was like you're an idiot this guy's incredible uh i was like all right let's get a pitch from him let's get a pitch and see what see what he comes up with uh, we hadn't spoken to him but a lot of the references for us aesthetically on this record are kind of you'll get this like 120 minutes mtv2 yeah like i grew up watching nothing but that at the weekends because that was like i think that show came on like pretty late yeah. and i would just wait like i'd just be so excited for night to come so i could just sit and watch 120 minutes uh so th- we were referencing that a lot and like yeah early like mtv2 and stuff like that and zach's pitch referenced all of it yeah all of it like uh mtv2 120 minutes uh song two by blur like some really niche grunge videos that we were really into like um like swallowed by bush and shit like that like yeah um yeah and all these other like movie references because we we reference movies all the time when we're actually making music probably more so than we do actually referencing actual songs now (laughs) like about um like a visual that we can kind of create too and the feeling we get does it have the same feeling that we we experience when we're watching like a specific scene that happens a lot with our band so he referenced yeah he just like nailed all the references and i messaged our a and r guy saying did you tell him all this stuff he's like i promise you i didn't so that was that um perfect yeah the pitch was just perfect and it felt it felt kind of it felt nostalgic and modern which is exactly we wanted it to feel familiar but also kind of very um like very kind of in your face and new um and i think he blended it perfectly yeah that video is so much fun so much fun to make yeah, and so much fun to watch. And I definitely, again, the link will be in the bio of the episode. So I encourage listeners to, to look at that because it is a lost start. And, uh, you know, make us sound old, but kids these days don't really understand the sitting in front of the music because it's all on demand on YouTube now, isn't it? So obviously, yeah, the link. Totally. And like, yeah. you know, we've, we still get like gassed on making them because we've like spent our entire career with like a shoestring budget to give like 100 quid to our mate. It's like, can you just point this camera and we'll fucking do something? Um, so we actually got like proper music video budget with the with our new deal with Unified. So we were like, oh my god! So we like love it. We loved making them and like getting the edits back and working with Zach on on all the videos and yeah, it was like a real like privilege to get to do it because like you say we, we're the same we grew up just the only thing that would be on in our in our homes were was music tv so we still love it so we're getting like a real kick out of it of doing them yeah and i absolutely love it yeah absolutely fantastic and, and really chuffed to hear you, you share the sentiments of me in music videos because sometimes i feel like it's only me um <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah um Obviously, the latest single from the album is Blame that I just wanted to touch on because uh, it also yeah. features um, Steve's bandmate from Blood Red Shoes. Um, Laura Mary Carter is, is on the song as well. So um, what can you tell us about that that single? Yeah, it's like the it's it's definitely the most quintessential cert song on the record. Mm. Um, not I think. I think two songs on the album were actually written together in a room, uh, in a rehearsal space, sorry. Uh, The rest of the record was written in studios, in various studios, and then kind of Tom would lay down the drums after, so he would have like a full song to play to. But Blame uh, was written, just the three of us, in like a windowless room. And I remember when I first brought it to the guys, I was like, I was slightly worried that it sounded really, really basic. Um, And also, like, was concerned that it sounded too much like 90s feeder. 
I was like, this sounds, I was like, I can't. but I was like, something in it. And the, the original version that we had was, yeah, kind of like almost, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it was almost embarrassingly simple, uh, which is not a bad thing, but I just couldn't like, I, I, I was like, is this just dumb? that was it it was like yeah i was like it was a very thin line between being simple and being dumb and the two are very different <laughs> so uh we stuck out and then we kind of added more and more to it and it started to become like almost kind of like a little bit a little bit more like new wavy and like added some guitar in it that was like very cure inspired and then as when we took it in Steve, he was just like, there's just so much going on here, like way too much. He stripped it right back to the original, <laughs> what the original was, and then just added some, some flair to it. Um, and again, he gave us the confidence to be like, you wrote this one in a room. This like, you should be proud of the fact this is like the three piece energy. Um, and he's like, it's fucking great. It's like big heart, your sleeve, pop song uh about accountability and he was like let's lean into it so yeah we added some like kind of kind of glitchy touches to it and 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 yeah definitely bulked it up so it doesn't sound as simple as it actually is kind of tart <laughs> up <laughs> um and then yeah yeah the song is all about accountability first time I think I've I've ever really done it like in in terms of lyrical content I've kind of always tried to find like a scapegoat or like some sort of like deep rooted problem within me as to why I can't like hold down a relationship and and this time around it was like just admit you can be a bit of a fucking dick and and just say it yeah and so I I did just that. So yeah, that's uh yeah, I'm I'm really proud of that one. I that I'm really excited to play it live. I can't wait to play that one live. So um yeah, I'm glad it made it on there. Yeah, no, it is fantastic. It really is. And I'm glad you touched on the live side because that's a great segue to where we're now heading. So um obviously, you know, hopefully the listeners listening to this is really whetted their appetite and they're really excited to, to get hold of this record. Again, a physical copy, ideally. Uh, of course, it will be on all the streaming platforms as normal. Um, and one of the first opportunities to to catch some of these songs live, I would assume, is going to be the in stores you're going to do. So the week following the release of the album, you've got six in stores lined up. Um yeah. In Scotland, London, and uh, Brighton, I believe. So, um, yeah. obviously, in stores, uh, intimate performances with, with signings as well. And obviously, p listeners can go pick up a ticket and um, album combo, which obviously I definitely yeah. encourage them to do. If they do pop along, what can they expect from the the experience? Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna play. I think we're gonna play like six or seven new songs. Uh, London's London and Kingston are a little different because they're full band shows. So we might uh, throw in just a couple of oldies just to uh, just so there's a bit more of an experience there. But yeah, the, the acoustic shows, yeah, six or seven songs. Um, I think we're going to I always like enjoy those kind of intimate mm shows in a record store because they can feel a bit weird yeah but i quite like that so uh i always end up like gobbing off about absolute nonsense but i like that i like seeing where uh sometimes those moments take you because like you find i find those moments especially with like kind of conversation with the crowd i find those like it's so spontaneous it like changes it every time you are in a different city and i don't talk a mass amount during the full band shows i kind of try and get the crowd going but it's not as conversational so I, I like it when yeah we're kind of like face to face with the audience and it's a lot more kind of a lot more human i guess 
uh, and vulnerable, which is important. So, yeah, uh, we'll play yeah six, seven new songs. I'll waffle on. And, I mean, if people want to ask questions, I think I'm going to start opening up the the floor to questions. Yeah. Uh, a lot of this campaign is about, like, full transparency and the record's a lot about, like, ego death and, um, like, shaking your pride uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just want it to be, like, fully transparent and everybody in the room to feel comfortable. If they want to ask something, just ask it. Like, and then... Yeah, we'll sign some records and and uh, squeeze some people and say thank you a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they are a great experience and they're they're becoming obviously more and more popular and I I love that because again just getting the unique takes on the songs as well like bands playing like songs acoustically and getting to hear them in a different setting to a normal show is I I just really enjoy. But obviously for yeah. fans that want to come to a proper show, you've got them um, tied up as well. You've got uh, October. Um, you're out on the road and I'll quickly list off for the listeners um, where you're going to be. Southampton, Exeter, London, Norwich, uh, Birmingham, Leeds, Manchester, Newcastle, Aberdeen and Glasgow. So a, a decent tour. It's not just the typical Manchester and London and yeah. maybe if people are lucky up in the Scotland, Glasgow, you, you're hitting yeah. some great places. Um, so um, obviously what should listeners expect? Obviously that is that's full band and that is going to be, you know, I, I guess from across your career. But um, what have you got planned for those shows? I think it will be a pretty lengthy set. I think we're wanting to cater for everybody and and not just kind of indulge ourselves entirely on the new record. But um, I mean, the, the new record's only half an hour long. So yeah. uh, we could play it in its entirety and still have an hour and 15 to go. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I think like there's a little bit of uh, problem solving to do with some of the new material in regards to how we play it we're still kind of wrapping our heads around a few of the songs that we've made and how we're going to present them. So, um, but I imagine we'll probably play maybe like seven or eight songs from the new record. And then we're wanting to kind of cover all bases and play stuff from the, from the back catalog. So, yeah, we're going to try and, like, cater for everybody on that one because, yeah, we're well aware that, uh, you know, we've all been to shows before where the artist, you know, fully, you know, acts selfishly and just plays new material. And, yeah, we're we're kind of, you know, balancing that because we're, we're you know, we're so, so proud of the new stuff. And I think new stuff sounds like really really great when we're playing it in the room and played some new stuff at trees and bella and it went down great so yeah and we're super proud of it so we want to showcase the new stuff and where we're at but, but yeah we will definitely definitely be playing some some of the, the big hits of yeah. the old yeah <laughs> but yeah, oh, um, yeah. yeah. Excellent. No, and I encourage listeners to pick up a ticket if you can head along. And um, I, I always, I'd always encourage bands to play as much new material as possible, personally, because um, that's just the sort of person I am. But I do get that other people that go to these shows obviously maybe haven't seen the band before and want to hear the songs that they obviously love. So um, a good mix, a good balance, like you say, is always good. Um, and obviously, listeners uh, can stay up to date with the band. Um, obviously, everything going on with you across social media. I always give out the social handles, and you've made my job really easy because it is literally the band's name <laughs> across all of the social <laughs> yeah so the excerpts wherever you do your social mediaing um you can find the band uh at the excerpts no underscores or any of the joyful stuff i sometimes have to read out happy days for that, that one it's the one pro of having a really stupid band name <laughs> <laughs> definitely nobody, definitely. Else, nobody else took it so yeah yeah excellent excellent um yeah and uh it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you we have one last section that we've introduced in the last maybe six or seven of these podcasts now and we call it magic wand um so i'm going to give you a magic wand and you can change one thing about the music industry but one thing only and we know there's a lot that does need to change <laughs> so it's a t it is a tricky one um but with your magic one murray what would you like to change today um damn. 
It is a tough one. I mean, there's so many like basic ones that I feel like probably everybody has mentioned in regards to like payment. <laughs> to, to, uh, the art is getting a fair split whilst everybody fucking feeds off the carcass but um I, on, like honestly like like a may, the wave of a magic wand i think it would be for more uh inclusiveness in music i i still find today that like a lot of people are shunned and a lot of um uh female acts as well are just completely like not allowed to like can enter the conversation in in different um fields of the music industry which is just like so absurd yeah so absurd to me so um that's not right it's not right it's like if you look at music industry now it's like women are taking the lead man for sure like miles ahead yeah miles ahead um so yeah i would like to see yeah just a lot more support um yeah for not even artists for like females like within the industry yeah like i hear so many horror stories from friends who work in the music industry as women who have to deal with so much nonsense and i've seen stuff firsthand um uh in in venues and around the industry that's just like completely unacceptable so yeah big up the woman and, definitely yeah. yeah i yeah. could not agree more with that that's an absolutely fantastic one murray so yeah no thank you for that and thank you obviously for giving up your time and and coming on the podcast um so much for listeners to, to dive into obviously pick up a copy of the album out on august the 18th and um try and pop along to either the in-stores or the full tour uh, this coming in October, we always just chuck the final message to the guests. So what would be your final message for the listeners today? Thank you uh, so much for the continued love and support. We're um, very thankful and proud to still be doing what we're doing. But uh, yeah, we couldn't do that without everybody supporting. So yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, no, absolute pleasure, Murray. Thank you for coming on. Well, thank you everyone for listening. I really do hope you enjoyed that chat there with the excerpts. Do make sure you check out their new album, Learning How to Live and Let Go, which is out on August the 18th. And of course, follow the band across social media to stay up to date with everything coming from them. You can also stay up to date with Full Pelt. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And finally, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, wherever you're watching or listening, because we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Full Pelt Music podcast.